Okay. Thank you, Mimi. Um, so th thank you for having me. Uh, let's get right to that that link um, and and talk about how you can download it and um, feel free to do it now while we're talking if you want to review it and that might inspire some questions um, uh, uh, for the full um, evaluation rubric that we developed. Let me give you a quick intro. Um, the, uh, my colleague um, Brian Mitchell from Nevada and Mimi and I worked on um, this project for nearly a year, if not over a year, um, and we uh, informed ourselves by reading literature and um, examining different um, examples of successful um, programs such as Kathy's that she just shared with us and created this rubric for assessment to guide um, people that want to create some good, good projects and to help um, help them navigate uh, um, successful outcomes uh, uh, in, a, in a good way. So um, Brian, um, I think, summed it up in a beautiful um, quote. He said, this rubric was created after a lengthy examination of the research and best practices around increasing equity in STEM education and following a thorough review of practitioners and experts from around the nation. In Nevada, broadening participation in STEM is one of our four priorities. We believe this rubric has significant value to help our teachers, school administrators, and informal educators come to know the key attributes of an equitable STEM education and to conduct a self-evaluation to identify opportunities for growth. Additionally, as our office works with aspiring STEM schools, we plan to use this rubric to better communicate the principles of broadening participation in STEM. So that, that sums up um, basically the spirit behind um, the development of this tool. And um, I would like to add that recently, at the end of um, August, in the state of Utah, where I live, um, we received a, a great opportunity. United Nations, for the first time since I think the 1940s, um, they decided to host the, and it, it was a couple years in the making, but they um, chose to host the 68th uh, United Nations Civil Society Conference here in Salt Lake. And I was invited to, um, to talk um, uh, along the lines of the theme for that conference, Building Inclusive and Sustainable Cities and Communities. And specifically, I was asked to address the international um, goal of United Nations, the Sustainable Development Goal Number Four, um, which the, the outline of that goal is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Um, in the um, in in 2015, uh, there was a I want to read this to get it get it right for you. Um, there was a UNESCO um, together with UNICEF, the World Bank. Uh, UNFPA, UNDP, and UN Women, and UNHCR organized the World Education Forum in Incheon, um, the Republic of Korea, and they hosted over um, 1,600 participants from 160 countries, including over 120 ministers and heads and me members of delegations and agencies. So all these people got together and adopted these strategies well, when I spoke for the UN and I went over the strategies, I was excited to learn it, it happened to be not one of the um, uh, pieces of evidence that we even reviewed because it, it uh, addresses international issues. But when I spoke on that topic, um, I was excited to recognize that this tool that we developed aligned very well with um, this, this document that came out of a world um, consortium of people. Um, and so uh, I, I mentioned that um, in my presentation to some international people that um, there, that I, I am STEM was already on it for our national tools. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, so let's talk about what, um, what's included in um, this document that hopefully you've had time to download, and if not, you can uh, take a look at later. Um, so we um, developed eight attributes um, that um, that can approach, and 
we actually tried, we, we tested our um, model on a limited basis at the educational summit in the spring to, to receive some feedback. And um, I, I found it interesting because of time, we um, shared with the audience one attribute per group. And so people were um, evaluating our tool and um, some of the feedback was, wait, we need more. And the, we do have more, we have eight. <laughs> um, but they just evaluated you know, one attribute at the time. So you can see that it's a holistic approach um, that uh, you can use this rubric tool to, to identify multiple areas of success with your program or areas that you might want to improve um, through your program. So the equity focus, it's just clearly a stated equity in the STEM mission and a vision, and there needs to be a need statement and a history of positive outcomes that explicitly um, impact underrepresented groups. So we want um, a, a, an excellent program will pay attention to that equity focus. The capacity, um, we, we recognize that the capacity needs to be sustainable. We don't want projects that are just a one and done, and um, we want them to be replicable and scalable um, with diverse students in, and um, to create diverse communities. Um, and then that we ha wanted to have a career connection. Students are connected to their future college and career goals, engage with business. And I was excited to know that Kathy talked a lot about self-efficacy um, because once someone recognizes that they um, have that self-efficacy, they connect, they often, um, the literature shows that they often connect that efficacy to a, a career and they can see clearly the applications of what they know and how they can apply it. And um, so we so we feel like engaging with business and industry will provide um, a, a good STEM role models and work-based learning opportunities. The STEM content, we, we determined that STEM that needs to be challenging and relevant and it needs to align with standards. It needs to be integrated within the former curriculum, technology rich, um, and no more worksheets, right? There's there's opportunity to be technology rich and accessible um, by diverse students, uh, different modalities of delivery that leads to college and uh, career transition in STEM. We also recognize that instruction, uh, STEM instruction um, that integrates a technology uses multiple high impact instructional strategies that are culturally relevant, experiential, and inspire students to pursue more STEM coursework or a career in STEM. Uh, high impact educational um, practice strategy uses the best practices to engage uh, diverse uh, learners. Um, we recognize that there needs to be professional development. Um, integrated professional development on equity, inclusion, and cultural competence in program design and pedagogy. It needs to be long-term sustainable development. Again, not a one and done. Um, uh, our, our faculty and our administrators need continued discussions, continued safe places uh, to, to learn how to have um, an impact in their community. Um, we recognize that leadership is a commitment from the organization. It's the top down. Um, it's, it's reflected by program visibility, um, faculty and staff engagement, financial investment. Um, many times, I, I know in my experience and probably yours, you're, you're told, yeah, go ahead and you know implement some kind of new program, but you're not getting any financial investments, so good luck. Um, so we we recognize that leadership, um, you know, needs needs to give you that support in um, the systemic integration. And then the community, authentic community partnerships and family engagement of the target population that's being served. Um, oddly enough, I'll refer back to my uh, UN presentation. Um, it, the the session that I did was well over 200 people. Um, I, I think there were 7,000 or something enrolled in the conference overall, but my breakout session was pretty large and we were instructed that that we needed to open it up um, for conversation for at least uh, 20 minutes of our presentation. Um, I, we had an hour and a half. Um, so we had to have 20 minutes of that of discussion and we had microphones and people came forward talk from all over the world talking about uh, the difficulties of involving their community. And some of the topics that came up was, um, you know, that, that they don't even know, community members don't even know what they don't know. And it's up to us to inform and teach and bring that those community voices in. Um, and without that, you know, you're not going to have some. So these, all of these attributes are interconnected. They strengthen each other. 
and um, we're we're really pleased with our rubric, and we um, we invite you to try it and use it. Um, we we look forward to finding a way to evaluate the tools, and right now it'll just be um, a, an informal approach. So so we're hoping you can apply some of these um, principles and utilize the rubric and let us know how it works for you, and um, and. And maybe even if we need to do a few revisions, we're we're happy to know about um, your your input. So yeah, we're going to end with how might you use the rubric, and maybe will you be leading that discussion, or or would you like me to continue? Well, I was just going to encourage everyone if they would, um, they could just you know put their answer in the chat box. If you um, haven't had a chance to download the document and take a look at it, I did want to mention that for each of the um, attributes that Susan talked about, there are what we call sort of sub-attributes, there are sections for each, um, and then for, e for each of those subsections, there are statement descriptions that um, basically set the benchmark for whether or not a program or practice um, is accomplished, established, developing, or undeveloped. So the rubric has those criteria so it's a very comprehensive document. Um, if you, you know, consider length as an important measure of amount of information, it's 20 pages long. So this is not a short read. <laughs> well, I, you know, um, and I might add that the, that the UN one is like 83 pages. So we did pretty well. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, so I would encourage you to take a look at it. And I would also um, echo Susan's comments about if you have any feedback for us about the rubric or if you use it and have feedback either, you know, this needs to be fixed or this section doesn't work well for us or it worked really great and this is how we would love to hear about it. But we, we want it to be a tool um, that is shared widely out in the field and utilized um, as best as you uh, can. So please, um, please do that. Again, if, if any of you have any ideas about how you might use the rubric and you want to pop that in the chat box, um, it would be great to, to see those coming up. Thank you. And I'm going to back the screen up. Somebody was asking where the URL is for the rubric. You can find it on this page. So if you go to napequity.org slash I'm STEM, Scroll down the page, you'll see an item that says STEM Equity Program Evaluation Rubric. Click on that, it'll take you to the landing page for the um, document, and then you can just click on this image, just like the one you see here in the screen, and uh, the document will download for you.